Has anyone used Meteor before? Is everyone aware of Meteor? Cool. Wait for those answers. <laughs> Sorry. Um. <coughs> is everyone is everyone here a uh, front end or freelance? You guys use Angular, yeah? Anyone else using Angular? You'll like it? Hey, afterwards we can all talk about how much I hate Angular. <laughs> yeah, have to use it every yeah. single project, but <coughs> I'm a, a Ember fan myself. Um, Well, Ang Angular. Yeah. Have you seen the 2.0 changes? No. Yeah, your 1.0 apps aren't going to work on it. It's, uh, I just don't, it's, for me, it's more the philosophy of Angular. Like, I don't think that's how web applications should be built. However, it's really, really good because um, I find where I work, I've got to bring a lot of junior developers on and ramping them up on Angular is considerably easier than Ramping them up on Angular and supporting them on Angular is considerably easier than um, than Ember and even Backbone because yeah. you kind of have to completely wipe their minds of everything they've ever read about JavaScript in order for them to uh, or building JavaScript applications in order for them to uh, to get up to speed with Ember. Um, but I do prefer I, I prefer Ember's philosophy. Not too sure about the community leaders so though in Ember. <laughs> Kind of an interesting job. I've been trying to learn JavaScript uh, from the ground up for the last year. Yeah. And just at the stage now where I feel like I need to change, choose a framework like Backbone and Ember. That's kind of why I'm here. But yeah. It's, it's interesting to hear you speak about it. What would you actually recommend? Um, so, my recommendation for all this is just from my personal experience, like I've ramped up probably about 20 junior developers from yeah. knowing very little JavaScript to being comfortable enough to choose a framework. Yeah. Um, you'll know when you'll need it, so if you definitely feel that you need it, like you'll know that point. Um, I like Backbone as the, I kind of feel like Backbone's the um, gateway drug between jQuery and a framework, because it, just because it does require you to set up a lot of boilerplate code, but in setting up all that boilerplate code, you kind of um, start seeing patterns in in the other fr that you'll see in the other frameworks oh, okay. that so where they do that for you. So, like um, yeah. for example, in Angular you have like this really cool data binding, but in Backbone you have that, but you kind of have to write the boilerplate code to set that up. Okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah, Angular gives it to you for free, and it's nice, and it's all <coughs> magic and stuff. Um, Backbone, you have to do that footwork yourself. I kind of like the idea of that because you need to, I think once you've got You do, but until you try and do it, and then you're just like, <laughs> right. oh, that's oh, that's oh, okay. <laughs> It's really annoying. All right, I'm going to start. I don't think anyone else is coming in if they are. Um, this is cool. A smaller session means that you can ask. Feel free to ask questions while I'm walking through. Um, there might be ones that are better suited to the end, like I may be answering them later on, but I'll try my best. So, I love code. Um, I love coding, like, it's it's something that I take with me every day to work. Some days I might not like the project that I'm working on. Um, I don't like debugging things in mobile Safari. I'm sorry that this is making a lot of squeaky noise. Um, but, like, I love coding. It's, it's, it's really is my meditation, that might sound weird. It's not, it's not an obsession, it might be. Um, it's not an addiction, it also might be that. Um, but to me, coding is like meditation. Uh, and every day I realize how privileged I am that I go to work and do the thing that I really love doing. Yes, I do get stressed out of clients and uh, on client projects and things, but um, 
for me, for me, when I get home, I put the kids to bed and, and I've got some time to myself, um, I want to code something or I want to learn some more coding stuff. So uh, when I'm at work, I'm generally working on um, someone else's stuff. And when I go home, it's, uh, it's, it's do what I want. So in the middle of last year, I was, I was talking at a few sort of London user groups. Uh, I was talking about Grunt and I went to the London Node user group and spoke, gave my grunt talk that uh, I'd been given. And in the uh, sort of after party drinks, a few of the guys were talking and they were talking about they were arranging Meet Your London. I had no idea what Meet Your was. They explained to me apparently it was the shiz, so um, I should definitely check it out. And their meetup was not your typical meetup. They weren't going to have talks um, necessarily. It was build a thing in a month in Meteor and bring it and demo it. Um, so that sounded, that sounded pretty cool to me, um, except for I didn't know what it was. So I had to go home, I checked out the Meteor homepage, I watched a little video on there, and now there's a little sequel to it as well. And seriously, within a few minutes, I had my first Meteor up, up and running. Um, it's a, I mean, it was the boilerplate one, but it's, um, it's a Meteor app, and you can, you can straight away, you can see the, the advantages of Meteor. So I generally like tools to make my work life easier and better. And, and Meteor certainly has that going for it. Like within an hour, I actually had like a, 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 a small app up and running, not just the boilerplate thing. So I'm a big believer if your tools don't make you happy and a more productive coder, you need to find some new tools. So I began. Uh, becoming a regular at Meet You in London. If any of you guys are based in London and are interested in, like, it's demo heavy, it's code heavy, a um, uh, cool bunch of people. I, I think they're around sort of somewhere between 60 and 80 people turn up at Meet Meet Up. Two. Sorry, two. that is at us too. Yes, that's their that's their Meet Up uh, place now. Was at Shoreditch Village Hall, but moved to us too. Um, Yes, yeah, so it's 60 to 80 people. It's the second official Meet Your Dev Shop. So, like, Meet Your um, have, have started supporting it. Um, and it's uh, filmed and put onto Meet Your's YouTube. So, it's obvious that I love Meet Your. But what is it? It's Meet Your's a full stack framework, front end temp templating using JavaScript, back end logic using JavaScript, database interaction using JavaScript. It's just JavaScript. Or, or everything. It really is, um, as I put it, the pipe dream that Node sold us. But really under the hood, all Meteor is is packaging of tools. Is they've taken a bunch of Node modules, common Node modules that are used. In some cases, they've created some, and they've just laid this common API on top of them. And they they uh, want to make building applications really straightforward um, and really fun and Really quick to really quick to start. That's not to say there aren't any difficult parts of Meteor. With like with everything, eventually there are hills that you have to climb, but you don't have to climb them straight away. You know, you can you can build apps without ever having to ha run into these problems. Um, and I think within the first few hours of playing with Meteor, you, you, you start enjoying it, and it's you remember how fun it was when you started. So when you have to climb those hills, you're just like, it doesn't matter because like I got this far without without that. <clears throat> Meteor is about getting started fast. Um, one of the reasons that I personally love something like Rails um, is because it makes me feel productive. Um, you, you, within a few commands, you, you spun up a Rails app. Within a few commands, you spun up a, uh, a, a Meteor app. And it's a, it's a framework that makes building real-time applications, really simple, like um, completely readable, the API is uh, really solid. And you can take ideas that you've seen before in other applications and make them real-time apps. So I'm going to show you guys some uh, a couple of demos, if because uh, why not? Right. So, um, 
these are the two browser windows. Uh, this is called Blackboard. It was kind of the, I suppose this kind of recognizes the hello world of uh, real-time applications. So um, the idea is, as, as I'm drawing on here, um, it's, uh, it's appearing on here in real time. If any of you guys were connected to blackboard.meteor.com, you would see that same thing happen in real time. The way this, all, the, all, all that's happening is that the data from here is being written to the Mongo database that Meteor comes bundled with, and it sends an event out to all connected clients to read from that database, and as it's reading, it's drawing back on here. So um, that's uh, a, a, a pretty decent um, application. Um, there's this one that's uh, Flick Pals, um, built with Meteor. And the idea is, is that um, anyone could be connected to this, and as I play this uh, video, it syncs up all connected clients to watch the same video, and you have a little chat bar um, in the side. Math Fight is a competition of uh, answering answering questions. Um, you know, again, uh, quite a, quite a neat idea, especially with uh, real time. So those are the sort of things that are um, in sorry that that have been built with uh, Meteor. Some of those were built for the Meteor London. The Blackboard was built for Meteor London Meetup, um, and uh, some of the others have been just ones that have been demoed on the uh, Meteor Dev Shop sort of meetups. So there are links there to a couple of them. And if you uh, if you go to madewood.meteor.com, it's where people sort of showcase the apps that they've built been building with Meteor. So if you need a, an idea for an app, or if you want to look at the source code for some apps, some people will actually post their source code as well when they build apps. So you are four commands away from your first Meteor app, assuming that you've never installed Meteor before. You got the hipster curl install. So this is um, installing from a shell script host on the internet. Um, if you've got a sysadmin, they will shit themselves if they see you run this. Um, but don't worry, it's fine. <coughs> it's safe. Um, Meteor create awesome app. So Meteor create, um, once you've installed, you have this Meteor in your, in your, uh, in your command line um, as a command. One of the nice little things it gives you is create, um, and then the name of the app. See the answer to that app and run Meteor. That's it, and your your app and running with Meteor. So Meteor has seven principles: data on the wire, a single language, database everywhere, latency compensation, full stack reactivity, and embrace the ecosystem. So everything they do. They have to make sure that they stick by these uh, principles, and they have done since so they've been around. So data on the wire. The idea of this is don't send chunks of uh, chunks of document fragments um, down the wire. Send just the data. So in Meteor's case, this is send JSON, um, and let the client side decide how to how to treat that data. Um, this keeps HTTP requests small. Meteor uses a templating language called Spacebars, if anyone's ever used Handlebars. So pre, pre them making their own sort of templating language, uh, they used Handlebars. What they needed is something that was more tailored to what Meteor needed. So they called it Spacebars. Um, so you'd already be familiar with the syntax if, if anyone's ever used it. Uh, Meteor downloads all of the applications HTML so when you package up your Meteor app, or when you're running it, um, all your HTML gets munged together and sent in, in, sent in the first request. And then that way, uh, any subsequent request is only for the data, even if you're routing through your application. A single language. Um, yeah, like we said, it, it's, it's, it's JavaScript, you know, they're really, Heavy on this, that they have one single language, one really clear API, and try not to break it. Is it just client side JavaScript, or is it like Node? Nope. Yeah, it's one language for the whole stack. <laughs> so it's it's <coughs> you're not writing idiomatic Node, um, but you can. Uh, what you're writing is you're writing Meteor code, and that 
gets split out and it's using node packages when it's running on the server and it's using um, their packages when it's running on the client such as spacebars to, to, to compile templates but it's all JavaScript so it's, it's, it is writing there. Um, so this is an example uh, this can be one file um, I do hate when people say you know in real world applications you wouldn't do like this you can if you wanted to um, it's probably not sensible um, but in real world applications don't do like this I'll explain it in a second um, so yeah var message hello world so this is uh, this block here, this if block here, is will only run on the client side. So when Meteor runs, this this is the only bit that gets delivered to the client, and this is the bit that gets delivered to the server. So you would see this um, appear in your console, whatever developer tools you use, and you would see this in your uh, Node repo or whatever you're running in your terminal. Um, but this up here, because it's outside of this block, it's shared code. So um, it, it runs on both the client and the server. Um, so in when when we generally build Meteor apps, we just create a folder called client and a folder called server, and Meteor knows that that's where well, everything in the client uh, folder gets served to the client, everything in the server folder gets served to the server. Um, yeah, Meteor's magic like that. It knows the difference. By default, Meteor uses MongoDB. Has anyone experienced anything of MongoDB at all? Um, it's a, it's not a relational database like MySQL. It's a, a document database, a flat file document. Um, but what Meteor does is it does all the plumbing for you. Like you never have to set up Mongo when you install when you create a, a Meteor app. It runs Mongo for you, and the version that it needs to run. Um, there's some bits that aren't exactly the same as Mongo, but you'll probably never run into them, or when you do, you'll you'll know how to uh, to change them. Um, and uh, what they've also created is this thing called Mini Mongo, which is Mongo for the client side, and it sort of gives you this really nice um, clear API. It's kind of like in a traditional app. Um, for your front end, you would create a REST that you would have a REST API endpoint, yeah, that you would, you would call, uh, you would pull data back from, uh, you would probably, if you're using Backbone or, or something like that, you would stick it in a model and do something with it. And then on the server side, you would write a completely different interaction with your uh, with your database to pull that stuff out and, and pass it to the REST API endpoint. So what they've decided is what if we got rid of all that like what if we completely wiped that out how would we want to interact with our database and it's like we just want a single API whether we're on the client or the server and this is how we want to interact with it so as an example uh, you can declare this in your client side or your, or, or your server side depending on what you want to do with it on the client side it would create a local version of it in, in their mini mongo storage which is running on the client and on the server, it would create an actual document um, entry in the MongoDB, and it's it, yeah, it's the same piece of code. So you could declare this. You would typically declare this in a shared environment. So in uh, what's what's typical is to create a lib folder that isn't inside client or server. It's just like a shared folder that both of them use, and you can create your collections. Um, collections is a the Mongo thing. Um, once you've declared that once, it gets run on both the client and the server. So you have a client version of this collection and you have a server side version. And we'll get to how those sync up in a sec. Latency compensation. So in order to feel snappy um, and feel real timey, what Meteor do is, is when we um, when we create a collection, when we save to that collection, it will automatically update the your your version, the client side version, so the user's version, and it will update the UI instantaneously because it's um, it's like save locally, sync globally, so it will save it locally, and the UI updates and it gives it a feeling of that snappiness. Then once that's done, it will then sync up the server, I'll send a request to the server to sync it up. Um, to insert into the database. Now, if that fails, it automatically rolls back the UI for the user, 
and you can display like an error message or something like that. Um, but if it succeeds, you don't see anything. And when it succeeds, it then distributes that database update to all of the connected clients, and then they see it, and it looks like real time. So it's it's a nice um, it's a nice UI thing. So anything that happens in the database, there are um, connections that update everyone else. You know, your UI is instantly connected, and you don't have to do any of that stuff. So full stack reactivity. So without having to write any additional code, your UI automatically updates. Um, it, it uses this, um, this package that connects the DB with the, um, with the UI. And whenever you put a variable in, it will update. Um, and you also get things like um, smart versioning of your, your um, supposed to be yeah, it's supposed to be. Um, you also get really smart versioning of your CSS and your JavaScript. Like I said, everything gets munched together by um, by Meteor, and you get like the smart cache URLs with the funky timestamps, and you also get this thing called hot code reload. So if you've ever used live reload in your in your workflows, anyone use that? So live reload is this idea that when a file changes in your system you shouldn't have to refresh your browser. And the problem with that, it's not really a problem. The issue with that is that you do have to have some additional setup. So maybe you have something like Grunt or Gold running and watching files and it's got to send the reloads to the to the plugin that you have in, in, your, in your thing. So Meteor does that, but it doesn't do it the same way. What it does is, I suppose you could call it a force punch into your application. It, um, it's called hot code reload. And the idea is that it sees the changes, it knows where those changes have got to be put, and it just slams them back into the thing. There's no refreshing of the browser. Uh, this means that if you are if you have a live application in Meteor and you need to deploy an update, your update gets deployed to everyone. They don't have to do anything. They didn't even have to refresh the browser. Like They will just see that update instantaneously. And that's for CSS, that's for JavaScript, that's for HTML templates. They will just see it instantly. Uh, they wouldn't have to... Uh, refresh or anything, and embrace the ecosystem. Uh, Meteor is a open is open source yeah, and it integrates it integrates rather than replaces um, existing open source tools and and frameworks. So, like I said, it's really Node underneath with loads of Node modules. Um, so it's not trying to replace Node; it's just trying to make writing Node applications uh, really easy. It has its own package manager. Yeah, I know like we need another package manager. There are very good reasons behind that, um, just because of the way that Meteor works, it just needs to manage its own packaging system. There's this thing called Atmosphere, so pre-0.9, which was released uh, recently, there was an additional install called Meteorite, which gave you access to people who could develop, so you can develop plugins for Meteor. Um, and um, Atmosphere.js was the place that you went to find. Atmosphere.js is a great way to look at packages. Like They've got stats on how many times they've been downloaded. They're really good at bubbling up trending repositories. So you're never really worried about which version of a plugin you're supposed to use because they, they do an amazing job of, of bubbling those things up. Um, and as of 0 0.9, it's part of Meteor Core, so there's no additional install. It's I'll show you how to add the package in a, in, a, in a second. And there are there are some interesting things going on with third-party packages. So this was announced recently that as part of Core, you'll be able to bundle your Meteor app up as a Cordova app, so as a PhoneGap app, and that and the tool chaining is going to be all sort of streamlined. It's literally like Meteor bundle iOS, and you get an app out of it that you can. Uh, then put put on the app store, um, so that'd be quite good. So we'll have a look at some code. Is everyone fairly comfortable with uh, terminal stuff? Cool. So um, 
I'd install Meteor, I don't have to do the hits to curl install and stuff like that. Um, Obviously, you need Node to, if you're going to be running like client side yeah. scripts, but if you're just going to use Meteor to create something on client side, you don't need Node. Uh, you do, yeah, you, uh, you will need. Is, uh, yeah, Meteor no. isn't a Node package. So Meteor is a Node oh, package. Yeah, so you, 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 you could install it via NPM. Um, I prefer the, 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 the curl method just because it's the okay, way that. So, Node is a it. prerequisite. Yeah, yeah, it is a prerequisite, yeah. Um, so, yeah, if I just go Meteor, can everyone see this? Yeah, yeah that's cool. Um, so I create, run this meteor create, done, and then I run meteor. So I'm inside the directory, run meteor, and you'll see it here. It starts up a little proxy, which is for the local host and stuff. It's starting up MongoDB, and it's starting up my app, and we all go to. Uh, at first, no, you you can know absolutely nothing because you can have just like the save um, stuff. It's it's that really nice sort of streamlined API that's, you know, um, collection.insert, and then you pass in an object. Um, it's like passing an object to an Ajax call. Um, so uh, yeah, you can see in the, in the browser that I've got this welcome to Meteor, and uh, as I click this, it's increasing however many times. So this is, you get three things. You get a HTML file, a CSS file, and a JavaScript file. Um, everything that makes a good app. So um, if I, so I don't have um, live reload installed on, on, uh, on Opera, but it will just change as I, as I save it. Um, so down here, um, this is the handlebars like syntax if you've never seen handlebars and this is essentially just saying hey grab the template named hello and and, and stick it here and, and that's this one here because if I just change this the, the button will change for us and then counter is is a um, is a reference to something in JavaScript we'll call it that it's a reference to an object in JavaScript or a string in JavaScript in this case so you can see here that I've got if Meteor is client, and I've got a bunch of um, code here. And so counter is a counter in the handlebars template or in the spacebars template is a reference to this counter. And all this is returning um, a variable that's stored in the session. And up here we set the default to that counter zero. Is that a bit like scope? Just session. Like, like session session is is um, no session is as in the browser session. So whilst this browser window is open, and I don't close it. But this, but this JavaScript is being run in that browser. So it's a bit like this, or kind of. It's, it's um, no, I mean our scope. Let's call our scope here. This template dot hello. So we've got template dot. But the way scope is used in Angular. Name of template. Um, scope in Angular is. Um, the, the yeah the view scope so so our view scope here is this so it's template dot name of template and our helpers are this so because this is called hello if I change this to I better not do that because that might um, if I change this to meteor like this would no longer work but if I change this to meteor That's cool. Oh, of course. So the, the the scope, as we call it, where we can scope our variables or anything we want to return to the template, um, we do it within these template helpers, or you can have um, template events that happen. So in this terms, it's the click of the button, and those are scoped to that template only. So if I had templates underneath it or anything. Um, just call them different things, and you can. Those events are bound to it, so it's parental scope is the is the template is the template name.
Uh, and CSS goes here. I'm not going to write any CSS because, um, yeah. Normally, just dump Bootstrap in this thing. So, so yeah. I mean, that's the that's the basic of um, of a uh, Meteor uh, templating. So, if I show you an idea of some of the packages that you can add, has anyone done anything with um, with OAuth? Like Facebook logins, Twitter logins, Google Plus logins, GitHub logins, whatever. No. Nope. Okay, when you have to do it, it's the worst thing ever. All right. I thought we didn't do it. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Meteor. So, like, the idea is is that you can install these packages that Meteor that that you can find on Atmosphere JS JS. And honestly, there's hundreds of them. Part of the Meteor core packages. Um, is this thing called accounts, which is the idea is that, that creating accounts like logins and user accounts and connecting with Facebook and connecting with Twitter, these things shouldn't be difficult. Meteor makes it pretty cool. So if uh, one of the other commands that we've got is Meteor add, and this is the thing where we can add packages. So it's almost like Bower. If you guys have used Bower, you're, you're pulling down packages, you're, in, you're installing them. Um, so uh, one of them is accounts base. Um, accounts base is the very basic. Um, in JavaScript, you're able to create accounts, just pass in a username and an email and a password, and then it allows you to create it. But we want um, a UI for it. So we install accounts UI as well. So I can just chain these as I don't need to install them one at a time, I can just chain them. So I'm going to install accounts base, accounts UI, and I'm going to install accounts Facebook and accounts Twitter. So I'm now about to show you how to do OAuth in about 30 seconds. From this point on, you can create apps that your users can log into. Fingers crossed that the internet's going to carry on working. Yes. So it added a bunch of, you'll see it added a bunch of stuff here. Um, this is all coming from the Meteor package stuff. Again, under the hood, generally it's just using some node things, some uh, node plugins. You, you don't really have to run it. So I'm going to run uh, Meteor again, and we'll skip back to um, a thing. I'll start MongoDB again. God, we have to wait so long. <laughs> okay, this app's still working. So I'm going to come back in, in into my app here, uh, where I've got this uh, uh, include Meteor. Um, I'm just going to include login buttons. So installing that account UI has given me this handlebars helper, which is login buttons. Um, this is all documented on the on the website. And so I've not done anything else. Where did those installed things go? They get installed here in this uh, Meteor folder, um, and they get uh, so, so still listed as packages. Your, your projects, okay. Yep. And so you can see here that I've now got this sign in button. Um, and now I've got these two little drop downs, and all this can be styled really, really easily just via CSS. It's all existing in your thing, in your document. You don't want to style it in the, within the package, you want to style it sort of within, um, uh, within CSS. And there are other packages that just drop Bootstrap on top of this. And maybe I'll, I'll quickly show you that in a minute. Um, but yeah, now I've got to configure Facebook and configure Twitter because in order to do OAuth stuff, you have to have like an app key and an app secret, and you can see this. Um, you know, hey, visit this, select apps, do this, set site URL to this, blah, 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 and put your app ID and your app secret in here. Okay, um, I'm not going to do that. I actually did this ahead of time a little bit. But I promise you when I switch over, all I did was, oh, actually, did I? No, actually, I deleted it. Okay, let's do it. Let's do some Chrome so I can at least remember. So I'm going to come over here, I'm going to configure Facebook login, I'm going to go over to Facebook, uh, oh here's all my apps, I'm just going to grab this. App ID, I'm going to put it there, um, app secret, There 
apparently that. Okay. Save configuration. Boom. Now I can sign in with Facebook. Done. Uh, the same goes for same goes for um, uh, Twitter login, and you can also add like accounts password. So you can just um, so if I come over here. You went, when you went to Facebook, you selected an app. That was an app you've made. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you it does it does explain there that you have to go and make a new. Sorry, I've got a few that I've done for. What you uh, then? Uh, it's you just add add a new app. Oh, I see. You just and then you go it. through the steps that um, that the Meteor gives you. Okay. Uh, in my oh, case, sorry, so, yeah, so I had probably those steps would give you would give you that you app secret the and the ID and stuff like that. Um, so Meteor ads. Let's add accounts password. I think it is. Da 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 da. da. Your list. So running me to your list will give me You can see here uh, here's all the uh, core API stuff. And I just can't remember what the uh, password one is. Accounts password. It is called accounts password. Why you lie? So now underneath, like I haven't changed anything in the HTML, that login button now has uh, a create account, which you can create accounts, um, or uh, just sign in with accounts. And that will create accounts and it will save everything to your database and it's, um, it's secure. Um, you don't have to go about worrying writing it. I would, I mean, I'm not a big fan of um, creating applications that make people write a new password and, and stuff like that. I prefer the OAuth stuff, so I'll generally stick with Facebook, Twitter. There are also packages for Google, GitHub, LinkedIn, almost everything that has uh, OAuth applications. You can just uh, create things like that. So, yeah, I mean, that's about as much as um, I can really show you in the time that we have in terms of, in terms of actual code. Um, is everyone sort of satisfied with that? Is there anything that you really wanted to see that I'm going to carry on, but <laughs> in terms of uh, code-wise, was there anything that you were hoping to see? How much of the benefit for Meteor is because of its real-timeness? Loads. Like, um, because, of its, because, because of its real... didn't have any real-time aspect to it, then would you still say that Meteor was a good choice? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's it's... Just really like nice API, page. really straightforward development, really quick and up and going. Things like authentication with Facebook. Trust me when I say you do not want to write OAuth with Facebook. I mean, there are things in Node, things like Passport JS, that make signing in with OAuth simpler, but nothing makes it as simple as that. And once you once you have that, you do have access to the whole Facebook graph stuff because you have that key and that connection to their account. Even within Meteor's context, you still have access to all that stuff that you would have if you'd set it up yourself. Um, right. Yeah, yeah. That's, this is what I mean about it's really fast. I, I like the whole like, building real-time applications in hyperspeed time wasn't wasn't a joke. So who likes to test? I'm not going to write any tests. But the testing story at the moment, um, in terms of Meteor, if you were wondering and if you care, um, is that it wasn't great um, in the beginning, uh, but it's getting a lot better. Um, there are two uh, sort of big testing pushes. Uh, one of them was Leica, 
who, which is created by this guy called uh, Arunda. He's once you get into Meteor, he's the guy's name that you will see everywhere. Um, um, Leica is now sort of. I think it's slowed down on development, and the big push is towards this thing called Velocity, which is which is there. Everyone get together. Let's create this one really good framework for testing Meteor. It's 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 supported by the Meteor core team. They think that this is the right way to go. So if you are uh, into getting into testing, um, that's probably where you end up looking. Deployment, right? So I've written this awesome app that's got Facebook login and Twitter login, and I'm ready to deploy my app. Where can I deploy it to? So if you're messing around, the first thing that you're probably going to want to do is just deploy it to meet your server. They've already set it up, and it's already part of that command line tool that you've installed. And it's Meteor Deploy name of app. And um, that will go through and deploy it on Meteor server. So they kind of, um, uh, the term is dog food, um, their, own, their own service. So docs.meteor.com is a Meteor application that lives and it's deployed like this. Um, you can password protect these um, deployments because um, if you don't password protect that and someone else does that, it will just overwrite it. It's a convenience thing. All of the deployment stuff is in the um, in the documentation, and yeah, so that's a really cool place. I mean, when I build little tools at work or for someone, like I built someone like a leaving card that was like a Meteor app as they were leaving, I just deployed it on this, and I'm just like it's done. You don't, you don't pay for it um, or anything. It's free deployment. You get free MongoDB. It's not the fastest thing in the world, but it's. It's free and it's, it's good to test things out in the uh, in the real world. Heroku have a build pack for Meteor. You will have to read up on that. Uh, there's a link at the end of this presentation for where you might be able to see that. Uh, Modulus, they're doing some nodey stuff. They also have a deployment process um, for um, for deploying your Meteor app. When you deploy on Meteor um, or um, or on Heroku. What you do is you um, demeteorize your app, and you actually it ends up so you demeteorize it. Uh, Modulus have got this thing called demeteorizer, demeteorizer, and it rips out Meteor and bundles up a Node app. So it takes all that stuff that's under the covers and and separates it out and makes it a real Node app. Not that it's not a real Node app or in, in first place, but Meteor does require some things to be in the server, such as sticky sessions. Don't worry about it, but it's a pain in the ass um, to be in place. So what they've built is this thing that rips it apart, puts it everything where it needs to be, and it still runs exactly the same with you got your SockJS and your MongoDB connection, everything. You don't have to do anything extra. You just run their thing called a Demeteorizer on your app, and then you can deploy it on Modulus. And Modulus costs a bit of money. You can deploy a free version to Heroku, um, but again, it's one web dyno, very small MongoDB, things like that. Uh, Meteor Up, like I said, Runda, um, you'll see his name everywhere, has built this tool that, like Demeteorizer, um, it's not like Demeteorizer, sorry, this will allow you to set up a server for Meteor. It's called Meteor Up, so it, set, it builds your server up exactly how it needs to be to run, your, to run a Meteor app, and it's running in Meteor, it's not running a split apart node version. And over time, we'll, there are some Docker containers. Is everyone, anyone? There's entire conference. There's a conference happening today on on, on Docker. Um, so Docker is this idea that you can con containerize your app, so it can run anywhere, um, and you don't pass around server settings or anything like that. You pass around this container. And so I think the, there will definitely be, especially in the Meteor community, um, you'll start to see like Docker containers come up. And you'll build your app inside the Docker container and then you just ship your container. That's the idea. So yeah, um, is Meteor ready for production? It's the first, it's almost the first question I get asked all the time, uh, especially by my manager. Uh, he likes to ask, but Meteor's not really ready for web scale. Yes. 
I haven't got long, so I'm going to breeze through these. I would love to show you demos of these. Please look at these um, as examples of the sort of things you can build. Illustrates is um, a, a project that I sort of demoed at the uh, London Meetup group. Um, this guy who's created this, and essentially what it is, is it's a map of the UK, and you can see, and it's completely like uh, graphics over the top, and you can see the best places to live because it takes all the data from Gov UK about crime rates and house prices and rent prices and distances into London and different routes like that. Uh, it really is an amazing app. Apparently, he had really ever written JavaScript before he wrote this. Um, it doesn't use Mongo on the on the back end, so this proves that you can do custom stuff. It uses a thing called CutODB on the back end, which is a um, coordinates mapping database. It's really good for mapping and stuff like that. Scout Eyes is a designer marketplace, so some e comm stuff um, and um, sort of social, um, what do you call it? Crowdsourcing? Crowdsourcing for designers. Um, yeah, built on Meteor. Uh, Respondly is a single inbox for a social team. Um, so it's connected to Twitter API pools and stuff and people can comment on tweets and suggest tweets to be sent via a, maybe a brand's um, a Twitter. Prisma, uh, again, I saw this demoed at the re most recent dev shop um, in London and this is a uh, Adobe CC extension. So it's an Adobe CC extension which you can write in JavaScript. You can write these extensions for like Photoshop for managing color palettes between teams. So a team sort of subscribes to a color palette if they're all working on the same design. And because of the real timeliness, if someone adds a new color to the color palette, everyone gets that update. And this is amazing because this shows that just because we're building stuff using web technology, it doesn't necessarily have to live on the web. Really amazing tool and, and really worth looking at. So some resources, um, uh, the Reddit subreddit for Meteor is very good. Meteor Hacks and Meteor Weekly, um, Arindo, Arindo's um, uh, blog and newsletter. The YouTube channel where every month there's a meetup in London and there's one in San Francisco. Those all get filmed. Uh, the San Francisco one gets streamed live. So if you're ever up at 2 a.m. and want to watch uh, Meteor Dev Shop, it's always on there. Discover Meteor is the holy bible uh, for Meteor development. So if you really want to get into Meteor development, um, buy this ebook. I don't know how much it is. It's worth it, um, whatever it is. Uh, it will teach you how to build an app from knowing nothing to having a Reddit-like app, we'll call it. Um, and the unofficial Meteor fact. I don't know when that was last updated. This helped me understand and get started with a lot of things when I, um, especially things like it gives you an example of a project boilerplate. Things like that. So my name's Sean. I work at Nice Agency. Um, this is me. We're usually playing ping pong or having parties. Uh, we give a lot of talks in house as well. Um, so yeah, it's, it, we're, we're an agency. Uh, we build primarily mobile applications, but some web stuff as well. And uh, yeah, thank you for turning up and listening. Um, if there's any questions, I don't know when the next speaker is, but if you guys have any questions, no questions? Your minds are just blown. <laughs> That's what it is. All you're thinking is like, maybe I can just leave early and go home and build a meteor app. <laughs> I, I know in a couple of weeks we've got Yeah, um, I, w I would really, if you, I mean, are you guys interested in building user apps at all? Like it, because to me, the idea of moving fast and just even, maybe it doesn't end up a meet your app completely, but it's like this idea of trying out your ideas um, is definitely sort of beneficial. And I think the workflow and, the, and things like that um, are, or, or is excellent. And if any of you are in London, I'm not always at a meteor up meet London, um, but I, I would suggest you know trying to go. Um, I don't. I think the next one is next 
Thursday. Um, so if you are London based, it's at us too. Um, you can find them online. And how is it, is it possible to get sort of the data, so convert the data that's in a MongoDB database across to like a regular sort of SQL database? Um, is it easy? Sort of no, you because start doing something in Meteor and using Mongo and all your other things, and you sort of like locked in at that. Point. So, so they want to build um, like a, I suppose, R ORM. Um, they want to build like an ORM for for Meteor, I suppose. So it's like you have that insert and you have that thing, and all you would do it then is drop in MySQL, and that would still work. So if you've ever worked with Rails. You have active record, which is like you write all your database interactions once, and you can put in any database you want, and it still works because in the background it works it out. So there are packages for MySQL, there are packages for PostgreSQL, there are packages for CouchDB um, that you can add instead of Mongo, and you can easily find the details of using these online, um, and you don't have to do anything different like that. That create a new collection wouldn't work because you don't create a collection in, in MySQL, but the insert would work and you would pass it a JavaScript object and the package that you've installed that talks to MySQL is the thing that translates it to a, a MySQL like um, or Postgres like um, insert. So I believe on the roadmap for for uh, Meteor they want to support as many databases as they can. Um, it's just not viable for them. They're just like, well, you can get going with Mongo. And that illustrates uses Cart ODB. So yeah, he's probably written his own package to interact with Cart ODB. And that's sort of what you would do if you wanted to, you would write a package. So your dot insert would still work and it would just translate through that package to speak to whatever database you wanted to speak to. Um, 